cache data in collections. So I'm sure you're all familiar with the SGA, the System Global Area. It's this enormous chunk of memory in which Oracle caches data from the database. And that's data that, that can be shared across all the sessions connected to Oracle. Now, that's really nice. But oftentimes we have data that we're not going to share across multiple sessions. We want to use in our own session. But we don't want to go back to the database and query it over and over again. We'd like to stick it in our own local process or, or program global area, PGA. And you can do that yourself using package-based data. So what I, what I want to do is, again, give you a brief demonstration of this technique. I've got a, a number of constraints about when you can use it. But if, boy, if you can find an opportunity to use it, it's really amazing. And I'll show you how it gets even more amazing in Oracle 11G. So the employee lookup script. So what I want to do is take a look at how I can optimize the performance of querying data from the employee's table. I have this function one row. Pass the employee ID, return a record in the table, and it does it pretty much as you'd expect. Get all the data for that row and return it. Now this is a primary key index table. It's you know, going to be very efficient, no question about it. But here's the thing. Uh, in my environment, and employees is probably a bad example, but just let's assume it's true, the employee's table is static. During the time when users are using the application, the employee's table doesn't change. Now again, employees is probably a bad example, but you can think of other tables, often reference code lookup tables, or materialized views that are defined overnight but are not changed during user sessions. So I'm getting the data from the database over and over and over again, or getting it from the SGA. Maybe I could find a way to improve that. Let's take a look. Employee lookup package 2. I pass in the employee ID. I get back the record. So the one row function in employee lookup package 2 is exactly the same on the outside as the first one. But on the inside, things look really different. I'm going to create a new type of data, which is a collection that mimics the structure of my employee's table. And there's my cache based on that type. So every element in this array it looks like a row <coughs> in the employee's table. So what's so great about that? Well, what I'm going to do is, at the very bottom of my package, I'm going to initialize the package by calling my load cache procedure. And the load cache procedure takes everything from the employee's table and puts it in my collection cache. And interestingly, uses the employee primary key as the index value. So one of the nice things about these kinds of associative array collections that I'm using here, and as you can learn about more in the class or from downloading materials, is that I can emulate primary keys. What's so great about that? Well, once I've loaded up my cache, and this happens once per session, then my function, my one row function, looks like nothing more than this. Pass in the primary key, go to that location in my array, and return that record. And I do not query from the database over and over and over again. Let's see what happens when I compare these two techniques. So I'm going to compile these two packages. And again, I need to build a script to drive the process. I just so happen to have one of those. Here's my test employee lookup. I pass in the number of times I want to run my, my test, which employee I want to look up, whether or not I want to do the query. Don't worry about that. And I've got, let's see, three, four, five different approaches that I want to compare. I'm not going to look at all these right now. We're actually going to look at these two. So I'm going to compile this packet, this procedure, and I'm going to run it. So I'm going to do, let's say, 100,000 queries twice. 100,000. Looking up 138 every time. So the data is not changing. I run my script. This should take about five seconds, because I've done it an awful lot. Whoop, six. Look at the results. And again, they're kind of amazing. Database table lookup. So I retrieved 100,000 rows. It took five seconds. Now, that's really good for 100,000 rows. No question about it. Still, compare that to my associative array cache. Fetch it once from the database, put it in my collection, point. Two, three seconds. Wow. That's really nice. So here we have another technique in which you only change the PL SQL code you write the way you're interacting with the underlying SQL engine. And suddenly, your queries are taking a fraction of the time they did before. This is really fantastic. Now, as I mentioned before, it's got some drawbacks. The data set has to be totally static. You have a copy of the memory for this, for this cache in every single 
connection using the cache, so if I have 100 simultaneous connections, and my cache uses 10 megabytes, I've just used another gigabyte of memory to run my application. So there are definitely things to be concerned about. And then you have to look at ways to manage that memory and so on. We could get into the details, but I've got a whole class for that. So the main thing right now is to notice that you can take advantage of package-based caching of collections to drastically reduce the performance of querying from the database against these static types. And just one final point here. I have to have it built in a package because my cache needs to be a piece of persistent data. And that's what happens when I declare it at the package level. I assign it a value, and it sticks for the entire duration of my session until I reinitialize my package or disconnect. So my cache stays there waiting for the next time I need the data. That is some really powerful stuff. But wait, it gets better. So this is a great technique, very much improved performance. But as I mentioned before, it's got these constraints. You have to can't share the memory across sessions. It's got to be put in this package. The data set has to be static. So Oracle said, hey, we should help out those poor developers who want to make their code run faster and are writing all this code to do it. So they introduced in 11G the function result cache. And this, I think, is by far the most amazing feature in 11G 1 and 2 for PL SQL developers. There's a lot of stuff for database administrators. And of course, in 11.2, there's a thing called edition-based redefinition, which has got to be one of the strangest and most awkward features Oracle has ever defined. Um, and it lets you do hot patching of your applications. But uh, not getting into that, in terms of like core PL SQL technology, the function result cache is the most amazing thing. And really, it's just one new keyword you add to the header of your programs, and you get this incredible impact, improvement of performance on your queries. And as I'm going to talk about once I finish demonstrating to you, uh, I think that once you learn about the re function result cache, it should actually change the way you write today to prepare for Oracle 11G, meaning essentially stop writing select statements all over your application, start hiding them inside queries. I'm sorry, inside functions. Let's take a look. I'll close all this stuff out. So in the, uh, the download, the download zip, you'll find the 11G FRC files are all the different files that demonstrate the function result cache feature. And what I'm going to do first is just show you, prove to you that it really works. I'm going to create a package with a bunch of stuff in it. We're just going to look at one thing, the last name function. I pass an employee ID. I return the name of that employee. And notice I add the keyword result cache. That's really pretty much it. In my package body, I've got that, the program that retrieves the, the name for an employee ID. I display the fact that I'm actually getting the employee ID name, just to verify, to prove to you that the function is being executed. And then I retrieve the data for that row, return the last name. And again, I say result cache. And I also tell it relies on the employees table. I won't get into all the details here. But in 11.1, .1, you have to tell it which tables your result cache relies on. In 11.2, it's deprecated. You don't have to do that anymore. So most of you will be up on 11.2. You'll never have to worry about that relies on clause. And that's good, because it's a pain in the neck. All right, I'm going to create my package. And then we'll try it out. So what I'm going to do is run my function 10 times. And then we'll take a look at what happens. When I look at the output, you see something very interesting. The first time I called the function in my session, it said, OK, I'm going to run this program. There's the DBMS output. And it returned styles. That's the name for 138. Then it ran it nine more times. But notice, no more DBMS output. It really didn't run my function. It simply found a match for my input values. And it said, hey, we've done this before. Why do it again? And returns it, which is what a cache is all about, of course. And just to really make sure you, you believe this, I'm now going to open up another session to HR. And I'm going to run the same thing again. And we should see that it doesn't actually execute the function even once, just 10, call, 10 re displays of styles. Because once it's been cached with the function result cache, it's available across all sessions connected to the same instance, unlike the PGA cache I showed you before. So this is really cool stuff. It avoids the execution of the function body if I've done the same thing before. All right, 
So what does that help? What does that do in terms of overall performance? Back I go to my employee lookup package test. This is what you saw before. Get me one row for the employee ID. There's my package base cache, which we also just looked at before. And then what I'm going to do is go back and create a new package, employee 11G. Uh, one row function exactly the same as the, the first implementation. Get the data with a query, but I add my result cache keyword. And the question is, how fast does this work? I compile my packages. I do my comparison. Let's see. So I run it 100,000 times. Let's redefine my comparison program. I thought it would have been okay, but I guess not. So recompile that. That's my driver. Run my script. Should take about five seconds once again. And here's what we find. So 11G result cache. 0.3 seconds. Caching the table in PGA memory, the first iteration I showed you for caching, 0.14. Executing the query every time, 5 seconds. OK, so clearly, what you see here is that the PGA-based approach is the fastest of all. But it's not that much faster than the 11G result cache. And I didn't have to write any of the code. I don't have to consume my PGA memory. The cache is shared across multiple sessions. This is really a fantastic feature. and. The table doesn't have to be completely static. Just find tables that are queried more frequently than they're updated. And that'll be a great scenario in which to apply the function result cache. Wow. So if I were you, I'd be saying, this is incredible stuff. But it's not going to be something you can practically take advantage of unless you've got your queries inside functions. So this is my bottom line to you as a recommendation to think about, and we'll explore more in the class. Don't ever write select statements like this in your high-level application code. Whenever you need to get data from an underlying table, write a function and call the function, as you see here. And if you do this, then in a split second, in 30 seconds, you can go to your function definition, add the result cache keyword, and you get this incredible boost in performance. And if you keep writing your queries all over your application, which is what most of us do, you'll never be able to, practically speaking, upgrade to the 11G function result cache. Really, really great stuff. OK, so I think I've fulfilled my promise. I've showed you four different techniques in which you change only your PLSQL code, and you get a boost of performance at least of an order of magnitude and often much more.